Hello, Choir of the Earth. A very, very good evening and a very warm welcome to our launch. It is the German Requiem by Brahms. We're going to be singing it with the incredible Bergen Philharmonic Choir and Orchestra under the immense direction of Edward Gardner. And, well, we are just so excited to get started with this fantastic course. It's really great to be back at the beginning of another big work. Six weeks of fantastic learning, singing and recording to come. And so much to share with you. This being a launch session, it is, of course, open to the general public. So we're going to go through all of the news that's fit to print and more besides with lots and lots and lots of exciting things coming your way. There's so much we can't even fit it in to this week's session. But tonight, well, we're going to be obviously launching the Brahms. We're going to be telling you the first two months of summer school that is just around the corner. Uh, it's all sorts of other exciting things. So just bear with me whilst I check that everything's working. Um, so now let me just check. Do I have Bergen in a box? down here let me just check it okay there we go that's quite a sound isn't it fantastic now do we also have the fourth movement here because I'm hoping to play this as an extra special treat. We're not going to look at this one well for four weeks but uh, this is just... <sighs> it's just the most gorgeous piece. The whole work is the musical equivalent of a hug, and there's a very good reason for that. I shall tell you all as we go, but rest assured, there is such a lot of wonderful and so slightly heartbreaking backstory to this incredible work, not to mention the excitement of singing with Bergen. Of course, we recorded the Delius A Mass of Life with them just a couple of years ago, and it's so, so good to be working with them again. To anyone from Bergen who's watching, in particular, if Hawken or Ed are watching this evening, thank you so much for, well, allowing us to work with you again. I know Mark had a fantastic time. Thank you for looking after to him and for sending him back in one piece. We really are so, so honoured to be working with all of you. So to everyone who's watching this evening, if you are new, this is Choir of the Earth. My name is Ben and you are very, very welcome here this evening. If you have a look at the live chat, you'll see a vibrant community of people from all over the world, including some Americans who are watching at the moment, Americans and Canadians, but might be dashing outside uh, to get a glimpse of the eclipse. Don't forget to use the appropriate uh, eye protection when you do. And I just can't wait to see all of the photographs and 4K footage of this incredible, incredible eclipse. Uh, here in the West Country, it's completely overcast and uh, we're only going to get about 5% anyway, so... Uh, you, you, you enjoy it on our behalf. Let me welcome everyone who is watching and chatting away this evening. Hello, Adrian. Hello, Atty. Hello, Alison. Hello, Amanda. Hello, Alison. Hello, Anna. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Annalisa. Hello, Anne. Hello, Annie. Hello, Barbara. Hello, Bridget. Hello, Carol. Hello, Carol. Hello, Catherine. Hello, Kat. Hello, Mark. Welcome back. Hello, Christine. Hello, Christine. Hello, Claire. Hello, Cliff. Hello, Deborah. Hello, Denise. Hello, Dorothy. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Emma. Hello, Fiona. Hello, Frida. Hello, Jeffrey. Hello, George. Hello, Gillian. Hello, Gillian. Hello, Gloria. Hello, Gwyn. Hello, Epi. Hello, Ian. Hello, Margaret. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Jane. Hello, Jane. Hello, Jane. Hello, Jane. Hello, Jean. Hello, Jenny. Hello, Jenny. Hello, Jill. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Viv. Hello, Joy. Hello, Joyce. Hello, Judith. Hello, Judith. Hello, Julia. Hello, Kareth. Hello, Kate. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Katri. Hello, Kitty. Hello, Leslie. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Liz. Hello, Lorna. Hello, Marie. Hello, Marissa. Hello, Mary. Hello, Michael. Hello, Mike. Hello, Moira. Hello, Nicola. Hello, Nikki. Hello, Pam. Hello, Pam. Hello, Patricia. Hello, Paul. Hello, Nancy. Hello, Richard. Hello, Richard. Hello, Robert. Hello, Roz. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Sheila. Hello, Soraya. Hello, Susanna. Hello, Terry. Hello, Terry. Hello, Ulla. Hello, Wayne. Hello, Hello, Wendy. Hello, Wendy. Hello, everyone. My goodness me. I hope I haven't missed anyone off. This is according to the list of anyone who's here. Glennis is shouting, hello, Glennis. Hello, Glennis. This is down to YouTube. It's not uh, nothing personal. I do hope you enjoy tonight's launch. This is astonishing music. Really one of the all-time great choral pieces, and it's been recorded by one of the world's greatest orchestras and choirs. We are so, so privileged 
to be working with the incredible Bergen Philharmonic. More on that in a moment. But it is five o'clock here in the UK, so do make yourselves at home. Not going to be doing a huge amount of singing this evening, unless you wish to, uh, but this is more of an introduction, a launch for our course. And if you are watching and you'd like to join us, well, you're very, very welcome to. All the details will be up here on screen in a moment. In fact, why don't we do that? Here we go. So very, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, friends from all over the world. Welcome to the launch of really a spectacular course here at Choir of the Earth. We are so excited to be starting today to learn, sing, record and enjoy Brahms' German Requiem, Ein Deutsches Requiem, which has been recorded for us uh, by the Bergen Philharmonic Orchestra and Choir, I say for us, they put on an incredible concert uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Our very own Mark Strawn was there to enjoy both performances conducted by Edward Gardner at the Grieg Hallen in Bergen. It was an immense performance and many of us watched the live stream and were chatting away throughout it, just, just transported. Sheer bliss is what we experience there and we get to sing along with it. So if you are watching and you're new to all of this, my name is Ben, I'm the musical director of Choir of the Earth and we here at Choir of the Earth are going to be learning and recording this incredible piece. If you'd like to join us, you can go along to choiroftheearth.com and if you are a new member, you can use the code there to get a month of Choir of the Earth for free. Well worth it particularly with music of this calibre. Now, before we get to the main event, we do just need to go through some news and some updates for all of you. First is to say congratulations and thank you to everyone who took part in our incredible Barber Arnius Day course, which was a short but intense, beautiful course which ran in February and March. Now, the submission deadline for that, as you can see here on screen, is this coming Sunday, 14th of April, 10 p.m. UK time, we are closing submissions for the Barber Arnius Day. So please make sure that you've got your submissions into us by then. You can submit as many voice parts as you like, as many takes as you like. In fact, we encourage you to do that, particularly tenors. So if you would, please get your recordings into us and huge thanks to everyone who's already done it. I really do think this is going to be really very much uh, possibly top 10 material in next year's Hall of Fame. Speaking of Hall of Fame, of course, those of you that have seen the incredible, it was supposed to be a three hour live stream. It was more like four hours, but and you can't blame us. There was so much incredible music where I think the only people in the world who had a top 30 with two extra pieces in it. But my goodness me, what a fantastic Hall of Fame you voted for. What a fabulous live stream we had. And so we have produced, I say we, the royal we, Mark Cease has produced an incredible Hall of Fame 2024 CD. These are limited. We're only doing a single run of these. So if you miss it, that's it. If you've already got last year's, this will make a fantastic companion piece. And so if you'd like to buy your own copy of Hall of Fame 2024, remember with such amazing pieces, of course, it's Quanta Qualia, but also Indo Dana, that wonderful Bohemian Rhapsody arrangement, Always Look on the Bright Side of Life, uh, Spem in Allium, Mozart Requiem, so much on Hall of Fame 2024. Get your CD. And if you if you've noticed, Talk about tech here. There's a QR code here on screen. If you get your phone out and just point the camera at that little blob over there in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, it'll take you straight to the shop and you can buy your copy of that CD. Limited availability. Okay, everyone. Now, don't forget also, we are working towards our Sing for Sub Postmasters. The closing date for that has already gone and the engineers are working hard behind the scenes. And on the 23rd of April, which is the anniversary of the High Court Judgment, uh, which overturned and quashed a whole load of the uh, of the judgments against some of these sub postmasters. We will be presenting the world premiere of "We Are the Champions" by Queen, sung by us. So the time of that is still uh, TBA, but please do make sure you've got twenty third of April in your diaries. Now, just there's a few other things to mention before we get to the Brahms. Don't forget that in just a couple of weeks' time, we have our latest Madcap 24-hour drop-in event. Uh, not, not satisfied with having done this last year and, of course, having done the Mozart Requiem for 24 hours recently, 
we are going to be doing Handel's Messiah for 24 hours on the 25th of April, well, starting on the 25th of April, 3 p.m. at St. George's Church in Hanover Square in London. Now, it's going to be an incredible 24 hours. I'm intending to stay for the whole time, and uh, you might be able to spot me snoozing in some of the pews, probably in the small hours, but we are going to sing Messiah for 24 hours. Now, you don't have to stay and sing for the whole thing. You can just drop in and then drop out or pass out as the uh, as the uh, days proceed. But uh, we are hoping to raise a substantial sum of money. We've got amazing inductors, including John Rutter, Lawrence Cummings, Harry Bradford, Deborah Miles Johnson, Ben England, uh, reprobate, Libby Crabtree, Rab uh, Ralph Allwood, Richard Gowers, Roger Durston, and others. So do please come along and support us. Details, of course, at labradorevents.com. Speaking of Labrador, well, we have... The small matter of the Mozart Requiem tour, which has been the most incredible journey all around the UK and the Republic of Ireland. And we are finishing the tour in Austria, in Salzburg itself, where Mozart was born. And we're going to be there from the 15th to the 18th of May, so not long now. Now, there are still a few places. I mean, I'm talking a handful of places for Salzburg. If you would like to come and join us, again, have a look at labradorevents.com. This is a multi-day event, including a visit to see Mozart's birth house and, of course, a concert there in uh, the Basilica St. Michael in Monsey. So an incredible trip and a brilliant way of wrapping up our Mozart Requiem tour. Speaking of tours, Mark and myself are off to Atlanta in America, in Georgia, in June. And so for anyone in North America or who'd like to come out to North America for a very, very special Come and Sing event organised by Choir Friends in North America, well, you can see the programme here on screen includes Daily Upon Your Heart, Stanford Bluebird, Set Mr. Seal uh, by Trotter, If You Love Me by Talis, Ave Maristella, Locus Iste, Let My Prayer Arise. So much wonderful, wonderful music. And so that is going to be the 6th and 7th of June and uh, we are so, so excited to fly out there. So again, that's another QR code here on screen. In fact, if you want the big version, there it is. So if you'd like to come and join us, all the details are there. You can buy your tickets and come and sing with us in Atlanta. Now, if that wasn't enough, we're going to be touring with Haydn's Nelson Mass later this year. As you can see here, we're going to start off in London in November and then head to Seven Oaks, Hove, the Isle of Wight, Bath, Norwich, Manchester, Edinburgh, Dublin, finishing in Eisenstadt in Austria in Haydn's hometown, which is going to be an incredible event as well. Details at labradorevents.com. And, well, this one is a particularly uh, important one for me because it's a family affair this one Carmina Barana by Carl Orff of course we know this piece very very well here at Choir of the Earth but if you've never sung it this is a unique come and sing because not only will you get to spend the day uh, with this wonderful work it's in a two piano and percussion version with my wife Anna playing one of the pianos and my daughter Katie playing one of the percussion parts but this will include not just the performance, but also all of the teaching, all of the guide tracks that we use to learn this piece. So you can turn up on the day actually having learnt the entire work, and then the day is far less of a scratch chorus and much more of a masterclass. That is Saturday, 2nd of November this year. It's at the Redland Hall in Bristol at Red Maid School. And uh, again... Oddly enough, details are at labradorevents.com. Now, something that I think is going to be of great interest to everyone in Choir of the Earth is I'm delighted to announce the first two of the three months of Summer School 2024. You've been very patiently waiting, and you can see here on screen, well, with the music we've got chosen for you, it is well worth it. We're going to have three pieces in June, and one of them is going to be by Grieg, wonderful Norwegian composer, and the piece is called Voren, and it's a work that we've been wanting to do for years and years. Some of you, some of the people who have been with Choir of the Earth since the beginning will remember that Lucy Cox sang this as a soprano piece. I mean, that would have been late 2020, early 2021 for us. This is a beautiful arrangement for choir. We're singing it in English. It is absolutely glorious. So Vaughan is your first piece for June. And then we're going to sing a piece by Morton Larridson. And it's the first piece by this wonderful composer, but I can tell you it's not going to be the last. It is a beautiful piece 
in French. It's called Directon, and it has been recorded for us by the Fieri Consort, as always. And then a little piece, a little vocalese, if you like. No lyrics, you'll be glad to hear, but uh, beautiful vocalizations. A bit of Delius, and it's called To Be Sung of a Summer Night. It's the first movement, and it is absolutely gorgeous. You will really, really enjoy it. So that is your June. So, Vorin, Directon, and to be sung of a summer night, quite appropriately for summer school. And then July is our Bob Chilcott month. We have two incredible pieces for you. The first is called MLK. It's originally a piece by U2, arranged by Bob Chilcott, and this is an absolutely stunning piece. It is, if I say it's Indodana quality, you'll know what I mean. Quanta qualia quality. It's absolutely glorious. And I can already see it's going to be a potential Hall of Famer, as indeed uh, are the Grieg and the Larrison and the Delius. We're also going to be singing Bob's piece, The Singing Heart, which, if you don't know, is a beautiful secular piece, but is all about the joy of singing and how much singing means to people emotionally. It's for choir and handbells, and we are going to be learning those two pieces in July. And then in August, well, we're calling it an even song in Helsinki, and we're going to be learning some beautiful music that's entirely appropriate for a traditional even song before Mark and I head out to Helsinki to perform it out there with a wonderful choir. And so we're going to be learning a mixture of traditional English even song pieces with a couple of pieces by Finnish composers. Very, very exciting program. We'll announce that just as soon as we can. But that, everyone, is your summer school. Don't forget what will follow that in September is the Bach Magnificat. And then we will be producing a world premiere recording of The Wedding at Cana by Patrick Hawes. And I promise you, you are going to love the wedding at Cana. I am obsessed with it. It is absolutely fabulous. Now, before we get to that, don't forget that we have lots of music already waiting to be performed. And I'm delighted to say that we are literally two or three days away from finishing the very first full run of the Monteverdi Vespers. We'll need another week after that in order to just apply the, the little bit of polish that you need just to ice the cakes as they come out of the oven. But Connor and Kai and Matt and Yona have been working incredibly hard on all our behalves, getting the Vespers by Monteverdi sounding absolutely incredible. And I don't mind saying they have said this, and in fact, Connor's family members have said, it's the best the choir have ever sounded. Yes, 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 I know I say that every time. That's because it's true. Now, what we're planning with the Monteverdi Vespers, I'm sure you'll remember, is rather than just throw them all at you in one concert, we are going to have a series of mini concerts, which will begin later this month, where we showcase uh, one or two movements at a time so that you can really appreciate them on their own before we have a full performance later on. And so I thought that's a little treat for all of you who worked so, so hard on the Monteverdi Vespers, because my goodness me, what a piece that was, or what a collection of pieces that was. I thought you deserved a little bit of a preview of perhaps the biggest work in the entire piece. This is Nisi Dominus, which comes from the heart of the Monteverdi Vespers, and is a 10 part motet. One of the biggest pieces we've recorded, if you don't count Spermanalium, which I suppose you have to. So here's a little bit. I'm not going to play the whole thing. Don't get too excited. But earworms at the ready. Here's Nissi. <laughs>
I know you want to hear more. Of course you do. It's the most extraordinary recording of the Nissi Dominus I've ever heard. And bear in mind, that's not the final version. We still have a little bit of spatial uh, mixing to do on that. But that, everyone, is a little taste of the incredible... Uh, I, I like the term Mini Monty. Mini Monty concerts coming your way very, very soon as we will share our version of... The wonderful 1610 Vespers by Monteverdi with the world. And huge thanks again to the incredible Fiori Musicali, uh, who, with whom we've partnered on this wonderful project. More details to follow. And if you're watching this later on and you're not listening on headphones, do go back, pop the headphones on and listen to that Monteverdi in full quality, because my goodness me, it's quite something. So, ladies and gentlemen of Choir of the Earth, Let's talk Brahms, shall we? Because, my goodness me, what a project. From Monteverdi's Vespers to Brahms' German Requiem here. And, uh, well, first of all, I just want to point out, and, and if, if we just have a quick look at the title card, bear with me a moment, there he is. <laughs> I quite like the fact, hang on, I'm just going to look this way. Look, I need to look stern. Shh. So it's before, after, before... <laughs> But the point is, you see, dear old Brahms, when he wrote the Requiem, he didn't actually look like this. OK, more, more on this in a minute. We are thrilled to be partnering with the incredible Bergen Philharmonic Orchestra and Choir. So, so honoured, so, so privileged to be working with them. And uh, Mark and I and the whole team send our love and best wishes to all of them. Thank you so much for allowing us to work with you on this. And so the performers, as you can see here, well, the performance took place in the Grieg Hallen, the wonderful concert hall in the heart of Bergen in Norway. The concert hall is actually in the shape of a grand piano when you see it from the air. Well worth having a look on Google Earth if you have a moment. So it is Edward Gardner, the conductor. You'll be seeing quite a lot of Edward over the coming weeks in video form. The wonderful Bergen Philharmonic Orchestra, really one of the world's great, great orchestras. You will be blown away at how wonderfully they play. The fantastic Bergen Philharmonic Choir, the Collegium Musicum Corps and the Edvard Grieg Corps, all of whom I'm privileged to have worked with before on the, uh, the wonderful Delius course that we did. And they are a wonderful group of singers. So, so friendly, immensely musical, great fun. And of course, led by their inimitable chorus master, Håkon Matti Skaleda, who is, again, a great friend to all of us in the choir. And we send all our best to Håkon. And we can see here we've got two wonderful surprises Soprano, uh, two wonderful solos, I should say, Joanna Valroff and Brian Mulligan, the soprano and baritone solo. So really a world-class performance. And we are so, so honoured. We will be adding our voices, much as that Monteverdi that we've just heard and all gone, wow, that sounds amazing. We will be adding our voices to this incredible Bergen performance. And so what I thought I'd do before we launch into the piece itself is I thought to set the scene Let's go to the Grieg Hallen for just a moment and just, just get ourselves ready. You're not going to hear the actual start of the piece, but you're going to hear and see everything that led up to it. Let's pop over to Bergen.
and you could hear a pin drop, I'm sure. Uh, rest assured, you will be seeing and hearing much, much more of that immense performance over the coming weeks. But just to give you a sense of the atmosphere in the Greek Hall, and it really is a beautiful, beautiful concert hall. If you've never been to Bergen, it is a fantastic city, absolutely beautiful, and the Greek Hallen is an immensely fantastic concert hall. So let's talk about this wonderful Brahms Requiem. And we've been looking at uh, Beardy Brahms all the way through, but actually this is what he would have looked like when the piece was composed. It is a relatively speaking, it's a, a mid-work for Brahms, but it was in fact the largest and the most substantial work that he ever produced. Uh, and we are thrilled to be learning this one over the next six weeks. We're going to be launching it this week, tonight, with the full choir. We've got bass tomorrow, tenor rehearsal on Wednesday, and then soprano and alto on Thursday. So let's uh, let's take it back to the beginning. There he is, looking all moody, looking all young and moody. So Brahms is, is what we call a mid-romantic composer. If Beethoven was the bridge that connects Mozart and Haydn to the romantic era... And really, he, he, he straddles that, uh, that change from the classical to the romantic period. Brahms, born in 1833, dying in 1897, is very much in the middle of the romantic era. And he was a Lutheran, born into a musical family. And isn't that nice? Makes a change. It's what often you hear about these poor composers born uh, to, you know, the father was a banker or a lawyer or something and forbade the composer from learning so he had to sneak off in the night and practice on an instrument. No, none of that. Brahms was encouraged from an early age to become a musician, but rather amusingly, um, they didn't want him to be a composer. They, they, in fact, one of his teachers said he'd make such a great musician if he'd just give up on the composing, the pesky composing. But uh, thankfully... He persisted, and what he left us with is an incredible body of music. And Brahms is considered by many to be both a traditionalist and an innovator. By weaving together the music of Beethoven, but also Bach and all of the traditional styles, but also incorporating the heart of the Romantic era, which was a very humanist, a very emotion-driven style of music. His music is rooted in the structures and in the traditions and the techniques of the classical era, but embedded within those structures, a deeply romantic series of ideals and motifs. Interestingly, at least I think this is interesting, and if you listen to the opening moments of the Brahms Requiem, you'll hear this influence. Brahms would famously begin every day of composition with an hour of Bach style chorale harmonizations. So that means he would take a traditional Lutheran tune and he would harmonise it in the style of Bach, really going back to basics, a really disciplined approach to composition. And he produced this beautiful, beautiful piece, Brahms' German Requiem. And the piece itself, well, it's a really interesting and, and slightly, uh, well, it, it doesn't fit necessarily into the canon of Requiems that perhaps you are familiar with, uh, obviously, Mozart's Requiem, Verdi's Requiem, Foy's Requiem, these are all sacred works. They all follow the traditional setting of the Requiem text, Requiem Eternum, Dies Irae, Lux Eterna, and so on and so forth. This does not, and that's very, very deliberate for reasons that will become clear very shortly. Now, first of all, let's have a look at the outline of the Requiem. There are seven movements in total, and we have six weeks. Now, I know conductors are good at counting at least up to four, but uh, it doesn't quite fit, does it? It's not quite one movement per week. Thankfully, weeks four and five, well, musically speaking, these are not quite as substantial as the other weeks. So week four might be a bit longer, but we're going to aim to get both movements done in week four. Now, the work itself was composed between 1865 and 1868. It was a substantial work that Brahms undertook, and it didn't just sort of leap out of him fully formed. He worked very hard on it, and in fact, it was a, a work that uh, took its time. Sometimes he was working busily on it, sometimes he would leave it for several months. And uh, as, as seven movements, as you can see, it lasts anywhere between... 65 and 80 minutes. As I've already said, this is Brahms' longest composition and largest ensemble work. 
as I've already said, it's a sacred piece, but it's non-liturgical. And it is a requiem in the German language. So that it's called a German requiem, Ein Deutsches Requiem, but that, that doesn't mean that it should only be listened to by German speakers. That is just a fact that it's, it's a setting in the German language. Why? Well, first of all, we need to look at what the main influence was behind Brahms's composition of this piece. Now, he was a great friend of the Schumanns, Robert and Clara Schumann. And uh, when Robert Schumann died in the 1850s, he was very profoundly affected by this. His great friend had passed away uh, and he took it upon himself to look after Clara, who was not a well woman, and indeed their children as well. Brahms' mother died in February of 1865 and a loss, well, I'm sure you can imagine, that caused him much grief and much pain and we believe inspired the composition of Ein Deutsches Requiem. Now, let's have a look, first of all, at the first movement. And you might expect it to say, Requiem eternum, Donna eis domine, but it doesn't. And th this is one of the key things to understand, to unlock uh, Brahms' Requiem. Whereas, and I've said this to those of you who have come along to the Mozart Cohen Sings, Mozart's Requiem, well, the theme of Mozart's Requiem is of salvation, wanting to be saved, that salva me. Uh, in the uh, in the middle of that Rex Tremende. Verdi's Requiem, the Diazire, is at the heart of it. You know, that the fear of, of hell and burning in the in the fires of destruction. For his Requiem is about paradise in Paradisum. Brahms' Requiem is about those left behind. If you think about the usual setting of the Requiem Mass, that is about grant them rest, those who have died. It is it's a song to be sung asking for those who have passed on to be looked after and to, have, uh, to be granted rest. Brahms's Requiem is about those who are mourning, for they shall be comforted. And that is the heart of the Brahms Requiem, comforting those who are mourning. And you can see with what I've told you about the uh, background to the Requiem, why that is the case. In fact, Brahms said at some at one point later after he composed the piece, he said he would have gladly called the work Ein Menschliches Requiem, which is a human requiem. Doesn't that make perfect sense? Now, what we're going to do is we are going to listen to the first movement. This is our work for this week. I hope everyone has their scores. If you don't, well, you can download the free score that is available through the Choir of the Earth website members area. I believe it's the Peters score for those of you who are following along on paper. But uh, if you just want to listen along to this first playthrough, that is absolutely fine. What we're going to do is we're going to listen to the recording as it was captured in the Greek Hallen. And so you won't hear the choir desperately uh, clearly over everything else. It's a proper mixed performance but then we're going to listen to it a second time and you're going to hear our quartet of professional singers more on that in a minute i think what we should do is we should enjoy the first movement of this beautiful beautiful requiem so everyone with edward gardner conducting with the choir and orchestra of bergen philharmonic here is the first movement of brahms german requiem
Not much you can say about that other than wow, 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 wow. What a beautiful, beautiful performance of an astonishingly beautiful piece. Remember I was saying not that long ago about Brahms starting every composition session with a good bit of Bach harmonization. You can really hear Bach's influence, not just with the heartbeat at the start, if you think about the John Passion and the Matthew Passion, but also that chorale texture when the choir is there, the, the, those wonderful cascading suspensions, the beautiful use of chromaticism. It really does sound like Bach mixed with the best of the Romantic era, which I'm sure Brahms would have been delighted to hear me say. Well, it's absolutely wonderful. Get a load of that harp as well. I mean, just at any time you're singing with the harp, it just adds an extra little bit of special, doesn't it? Right, so we're going to enjoy that again. This time I'm going to leave the mic on and I'll just um, I'll call out the various letter numbers and so on, letter names and, and bar numbers for those who are following along in the score. As we're going to listen, we've enjoyed a full performance. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and listen to it a second time. This, after all, is our work for the week. And what I'm going to do is using the magical technology is I'm going to now introduce the quartet of singers who we've got singing with us. And they've asked to remain anonymous, everyone. And uh, we have asked if we could name them and they asked, they just wanted to be uh, although you, you may see them on screen in the video with the headset mics, they don't want to be named, and so we will respect that. And so we'll just enjoy our wonderful soprano alto tenor bass choral singers who have recorded the guide parts for us to learn along to. So back to the beginning, everyone. We're going to have the first movement again. This time, though, you're going to hear the guide parts far more prominently. So the orchestra is still going to be there, but kind of taking a bit of a back seat. And uh, these are the voices that we're going to get to know very, very well over the coming weeks and months. And just bearing in mind what I said about this beautiful piece, it's not a piece uh, about those who have passed. It's a piece about those who are left behind, those who remain, who need that comfort. And I think that is one of the pieces, one of the reasons rather, why this work has endured, why it is for many people their favourite because it touches the heart in a way that perhaps Mozart's doesn't. And that's, I'm saying that as somebody who adores Mozart's Requiem. This, though, is the musical equivalent of a great big hug. So here we go. For a second time, the wonderful Bergen Philharmonic. So we're going to go from the top. Here we go. There's that heartbeat. Tension straight away. Resolving. More tension. Resolving. Nice crunch. Three bars before the choir come in. Okay, can you the choir taking your breath? Here we go. And.
Okay, take a nice deep breath. Bar 39 here. to letter B. Here we go. is bar 65, let us see.
a glorious performance so that was our quartet our wonderful wonderful Norwegian singers who have provided well through wearing headset mics for us and bearing in mind that was all recorded live incredible work by those professional singers they will be our guides throughout this incredible piece and you will have voice louder parts and we'll be learning with the voices louder in our rehearsals, which, as I've already said, start tomorrow with basses, then tenors on Wednesday and uh, soprano and alto on Thursday. And I thought as a special treat, just to wrap things up, we're not getting to this work, this particular movement, for a few weeks. But this is the fourth movement of seven. It is in the middle of the Requiem. It is one of the better known movements. I remember singing this in English many, many times before I was lucky enough to perform the whole work in German. Uh, it is uh, In English it's known as How Lovely Are Thy Dwellings. If you're looking at the PDF score, it's page 44, and I thought to wrap up our wonderful launch, I want to leave you with a smile in your face and getting all excited at the thought of learning and recording this with Bergen and with myself over the next few weeks. If you haven't signed up for the course, remember, it is entirely possible for you to come and join us. Even now, go along to choiroftheearth.com. Remember, there's a code there if you're a new member that gets you a free month of this incredible choir and you can be on the recording with Bergen and with the rest of us. But I thought to wrap things up today, let's uh, enjoy this beautiful fourth movement. I put the words up on screen. You can see here there's a translation, but uh, just let it wash over you. It's absolutely gorgeous. Here's Bergen. <laughs>
Well, if that doesn't put a smile on your face and a feeling of real comfort, I don't know what will. That is the fourth movement of the beautiful Brahms Requiem, which we will be learning alongside the other six, starting this week with the first movement, which we've been thoroughly enjoying this evening. Folks, if you're not signed up for this one yet, please do come and join us. This is an extraordinary opportunity to learn one of the world's greatest choral works with one of the world's greatest choirs and orchestras. And you get to be on that recording. That recording we've been listening to, you get to add your voice to it along with hundreds if not thousands more. You get to sing whichever part you like. You can record it as much as you would uh, as you want and as many different voice parts as you like. And I'm so looking forward to getting started. So everyone, that is our launch. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed and you're not yet subscribed to the Choir of the Earth YouTube channel, please do so below. That is completely free. And if you'd like to sign up, as I say, go to choiroftheearth.com and there is a code there that gets you a free month what an amazing opportunity to sing this great work. So I'll see you in your sectional rehearsals, everyone, this week. Do enjoy your week, and I will see you all together next Monday where we'll revise the movement that we've learnt with, with the wonderful Ed Gardner on screen, and we will start looking next week at the second movement. So excited to get started, folks. Thanks so much for being here, and I'll see you very, very soon. Take care. Bye. <laughs>